So I'm Chris, I also work on the Istio project. Uh, success for this will really be a matter of do I open up more GitHub issues? That would be successful. Uh, understanding workloads that people are trying to use Istio with and whether they are not working or working well. So it's uh, not so much uh, Shannon and I talking, it's really encouraging everyone else to talk to some degree. Uh, I also have a Etherpad set up at that link right there, ibm.biz forward slash istiobof. If you have questions that you don't want to say out loud, you could type them in there, and then I will notice that that's happening and answer the questions that way. So at the end of this, I hope to have you know, more uh, GitHub issues to open or just use cases that aren't working for you, and I plan to publish a blog post to kind of summarize whatever we discuss here. And if we don't get any questions, um, you know, we can either have a nap or we can try to make up some questions. So if anyone wants to start with something, maybe a litmus test, who has never heard of Istio at all? If you want to raise your hand. If not, and another person. OK. So uh, <laughs> quick overview of, of Istio. There's a few talks. Uh, Shannon gave a talk. Sharon, Shannon and Aaron gave a talk earlier. But essentially what Istio is trying to do is it's pushing a lot of the application things that you want to tweak out of libraries, like uh, Finagle or the Netflix OSS stack, into a centralized proxy that lives alongside of your application. So if you're trying to retry a request from your application to another application, uh, you configure some YAML, or you type out YAML, set requests, and then that'll get sent to the proxy, and the proxy will act on your behalf to retry those things. That's just one feature. Another one is being able to have uh, like a central point whereby you're trying to test a certain feature out. You, you only want to expose it to certain users. So you're looking at a rule that is set for someone named Bob. And whenever Bob's requests come in, he's kind of launched to the new version of your application, and he gets to play with that version of the application while everyone else goes through the first part. No prop problems. <laughs> yeah. So one thing um, that's been that's come up in uh, several of the uh, discussions has been around how do I get started contributing to Istio? Because sometimes people come in with a given feature that they like. a uh, given feature that they like, and they start out either with uh, a pull request up front, or they'll open up an issue with kind of uh, just a general how they want to go about it, uh, but it gets too detailed, and either it doesn't get looked at, or um, someone will literally say, this is too detailed, it would be nice to have a design proposal. So the, the common way, uh, you know, method I know Shannon's been working on is, you know, starting with the GitHub issue, uh, put a, a few details in there of something that you think might be broken, uh, a change set that you would like, or just general questions about uh, the use of Istio. Place that in the GitHub request and then expand it by creating a Google Doc or some other sort of shared collaboration tool to edit your design proposal and cross-link that into the GitHub issue so that you provide a lot more context. And you know, GitHub issues can sort of get a little difficult to follow thread-wise. So something like a Google Doc will allow you to you know, comment on the side and close things out. And then once kind of the general design uh, is approved, you know, we start working on it in the GitHub issue. And then you can start with your PRs. And the PRs uh, should ideally be small, just general 
Um, small open source types of things. There's a limited set of reviewers actually on Istio, which it's always trying to grow, but that just ends up being the case. Like some people have a general overview of one component, and we're slowly working to get people looking at that. But just immediately going with the pull request is probably just not going to get uh, the attention that you're really going to want on it until you explain more reasoning behind the pull request. For those here other than IBM, uh, are you willing and able or interested in contributing to Istio? Troy, I'm going to give the mic to you. I don't actually completely know the complete uh, problem space that Istio is supposed to solve. Um, I just know um, from talking to Nino that it's on its way to, um, to replacing Go Router in Cloud Foundry, or, or a part of it, or Envoy and Istio are replacing the routing layer in Cloud Foundry. And for me, I'm interested in knowing if that same um, uh, service mesh and, and routing layer can be used to serve applications running in Cloud Foundry and applications running in Kubernetes, or whether you want to have that deployed separately. So that was one of the things I had, and, and I wouldn't mind a, a, an overview. If you have one, you can share with us what the, what the actual problem set that Istio is supposed to solve. Do you want to take any of those? Or shall I? Um, you can start with like the Cloud Foundry hybrid thing. Sure. Um, so we're definitely thinking about use cases for interoperability between workloads on Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes clusters. And we imagine Istio playing a role in facilitating those use cases, uh, both application connectivity and, and security policies. Um, the, uh, the three um, primary value adds of Istio, as I understand it, are uh, security, um, traffic management, and observability. So the ability to apply security policies across all the services in the mesh, whether those are apps on Cloud Foundry or services in Kubernetes or some uh, data store that runs somewhere else. If it's got a proxy in front of it, then it can be made part of the mesh. Um, the same applies for traffic management and observability because uh, Envoy was uh, or has been built from the ground up to um, provide this observability data plane. It's, it emits a tremendous amount of uh, metrics and, uh, and as a result can give various personas a, a view of the, um, the traffic in the mesh and uh, um, number of errors and number of successes and as well as the security policy. What, are your what have you found so far in, in starting to, uh, to integrate this with CFAR? Has it been uh, uh, a smooth thing, or is it a, is it, are you going to get, are you anticipating big performance improvements? I keep hearing murmurs that that might be a thing too. Besides just expanded functionality, do you expect other benefits? Yeah, I'm going to hand it to Aaron because he, uh, I gave a talk earlier about uh, our experience working with the Istio community, but in terms of performance, uh, we expect to see uh, data plane improvements because uh, Envoy is uh, more performant than uh, Go Router written in C++. Do you want to tell Troy a bit about our experience uh, collaborating with the Istio community? Sure. Um, so I guess quick disclaimer: we haven't necessarily been measuring performance as much from like a latency or uh, throughput uh, metric. But we do expect um, that performance will become a focus if we ever do notice uh, there to be issues or it doesn't live up to like GoRudder's metrics. Um, I know that the community itself does have um, some metrics that they've posted. I don't know necessarily what they are off the top of my head. But if you were to probably dive through some of the um, either the email list or the like performance work gr working group, you might be able to get some of those numbers. Um, but we, yeah, we, we expect for the most part that it will be comparable. Yeah, and I think in your session before you had mentioned that 
at least the community version, they're testing with uh, about 10K uh, containers at the moment. Yeah, um, scale -wise. Yeah. I was just looking around for Surya from the performance working group. He was Yeah, he was just in the back, here. and then he must have left <laughs> early to get some beer. But there is a, there is a, um, a dedicated working group within Istio focused on performance and scaling, and they have a call you can join every week, and they publish uh, results, and it's a collaboration with multiple companies who are building out the testing framework and adding things that they measure and uh, identifying bottlenecks and prioritizing improvements. Yeah, and then performance on that, on that side as well, um, one of the reasons why Envoy itself, you know, a component of Istio doesn't publish its performance metrics is because, uh, one, that is, the performance isn't their first target audience. And two, uh, when you start to use a lot of the advanced traffic shaping and network features of Istio, um, in some cases, it's not comparable to, compose, to uh, compare what you had before performance-wise versus what you have now, because it might be faster in other ways, if you will. And that could be such that uh, maybe before you were able to get a steady throughput at X rate, uh, but if you had a failure, that would, that would kind of trash the entire statistic. So part of the features of Envoy is being able to steer away from bad problems to keep that constant SLA. So you can just measure like happy case both ways and get some performance things out of that. But some of the advanced features are really some of the things that could improve the performance in other ways, if that makes sense. I thought you also had a question around how is your experience working with uh, the integration with Istio and Cloud Foundry, other than just performance? Is that Did you want to know about the current state of the integration? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so uh, you may be aware that, that uh, well, six, eight months ago, it seems like uh, we put uh, an Envoy sidecar in every container. Um, and that's uh, serving a, a, a limited but powerful uh, use case at the moment. It's statically configured and uh, leveraging the, the instance credentials generated by Diego to terminate TLS for ingress requests from GoRouter. So the GoRouter to, to container uh, tr and data is encrypted in flight. And, and actually, that was a secondary benefit. The reason that we did that work primarily was so that GoRouter uses the identity in the certificate to uh, guarantee that it's making a request to the, the right backend, which gives us consistency in the face of control plane failure where the routing table may be out of date. Aaron, you want to talk about our collaboration? Did, sorry, did we address that already? You have given me more information than I ever <laughs> All right. Who else is curious about Istio? Anyone you, uh, currently working on applications that are not web-based? Non-HTTP protocols? protocols? Please. Please. So obviously, uh, TCP routing in Cloud Foundry is a kind of no prejudicial remark here. This is just it seems a kind of an afterthought, and maybe it, maybe it's our implementation, but it's 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 an awkward thing to use. What kind of things can we do with the new framework? Again, I'm I'm coming from the CFAR perspective, but also for Kubernetes. Um, what kind of things will that improve with uh, just basic TCP connections or odd protocol or different protocols? Could you tell us more about um, how TCP routing in Cloud Foundry is currently awkward? Um, it has to do with our implementation. So uh, we are running this in a containerized environment. And uh, because of some limitations in, in Helm and the way we deploy it, we have to actually pre-provision the number of ports we want to have open for TCP routing. Um, we would like to, that to be a little more flexible. Um, I'm already over my head with that question. So, uh, Do you mean like a range of ports? Like this can listen on a range of ports? Yeah, so we have to actually specify 
uh, a range of ports that will be open for TCP routing. It would be nice if that were dynamically configured or if there was just more flexibility to expose, uh, magically expose uh, applications on whatever protocol they happen to need. So the, the challenge with, um, uh, with non-HTTP protocols is that uh, in many cases, uh, especially when the client doesn't support SNI, you can't make a host-based routing decision. So uh, the routing decision needs to be based on a port. And the platform routers, go, um, whatever they are, Go Router or TCP Router, are for horizontal scalability very likely not internet facing. So you want a load balancer in front of those. So uh, without provisioning load balancers for each route, which uh, I would love to do, but isn't possible on some infrastructures, where, for example, your F5 is your infrastructure load balancer. Uh, I don't know of another way around provisioning some, opening some range of ports on the load balancer. <laughs> I'm kind of familiar with, because uh, this has come up actually in Kubernetes often as well, like uh, you can't specify a range of ports. For example, if you, uh, I've seen this most often in the telco space where you are operating um, sort of a gateway whereby everything uh, can potentially route to like one instance uh, just because uh, you have multiple things mapped to that thing. but it's not so much that each individual, like uh, it only listens on a few, it could listen on a huge range just because that's what you were given as a provider of this. So instead of saying I need uh, writing a thousand of lines of YAML to say each of the individual ports that need opened, you want to have that range. That was something that is not currently in the Kubernetes API, which, um, while Istio doesn't have a hard uh, line as far as, you know, obviously it's working with Cloud Foundry, so we, we are operating on multiple platforms, but the API is still based on the Kubernetes API. So if that doesn't exist in there, then we kind of have to extend it ourselves. So um, part of the issue uh, was it needs to kind of get fixed in the Kubernetes API first before that works. I've also heard cases of where containers operating on a huge range of ports like that uh, has had problems in the Docker ecosystem as well. Chris, uh, would that still require, uh, even if there was support for the range of ports as you described in uh, Kubernetes and, uh, and then as a result in uh, Istio, wouldn't taking advantage of that require that the nodes in Kubernetes were exposed to, directly exposed to clients. Assuming you have a load balancing tier in front, then those ports still would need to be opened on the load balancer. And that's the primary challenge that we deal with, is how do you right. open the, the range of ports on the load balancer in, uh, on GCP or AWS or Azure or some other public cloud? Uh, you, pub you could theoretically uh, provision a load balancer for each service so they have the full range of ports. That's, that would be ideal. Right. But on, in, in on-prem infrastructures where, um, I dare to say, the majority of Cloud Foundry operators are running their platforms, that's not an option. Right. Unless they're using an, an, an SDN, and you could dynamically provision load balancers on NS, NSX, for example. But if you want to cover all use cases with a single solution, then you have to open that range of ports on a load balancer. Right. Um, so just in the, in the Kubernetes space, in the, there are a few like on-prem bare metal sort of deployment implementations that do exist that feasibly could just offer this if there was a way to map that back into the Kubernetes infrastructure. So it feels like there's multiple things at play just for this one Seemingly simple thing. Just give me an array. Don't it's just give ingress. me a string. What's yeah. so hard? <laughs> uh, for that, I mean, if, if you're really interested in the status of that, I can point you to some GitHub issues to follow. And unfortunately, I'm not sure uh, at the moment because uh, 
I mean, Shannon's still right on the cloud provider front. Like, if you are using a hosted thing, now every uh, Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry host that offers some sort of cloud specific load balancer is going to also need to support that. Uh, so, you'll just general agreeance on things from all the cloud provider perspectives as well. What else you got, Troy? <laughs> Anybody working uh, with any IoT sorts of applications? Would any of you like to, to be able to run workloads on Cloud Foundry that require UDP protocols? Yes, please. <laughs> what, uh, what are you using UDP for? I'm not using it for anything. Customers, uh, so I'm not using it for anything. So I just have to provide a platform for customers that have, you know, whatever a right. Minecraft, a Minecraft server. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, I often don't get the level of detail of uh, you know, this is a particular kind of application, um, but it's just a, a checklist item. It's like we need UDP routing. You might know we had a UDP router in an older version of a Cloud Foundry that I worked on in a previous life. Um, and uh, yeah, that was uh, a popular tick box with customers who were running a variety of applications, so. Excellent. Anyone else? So uh, other than yourself as a provider, is anyone else? Everyone else is mostly working with web-based services, any gaming platforms or high-frequency trading platforms, anyone operating those types of environments? Everyone's using web? Anyone using HTTP 2 at the moment? Or Raise have your hand. developers clamoring for it? <laughs> yeah. IPv6 is always a good one too. This question is not all related to what you asked. So, but so we, I'm from the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance, but we're not using for the IoT. So we have connected applications that are deployed on the Cloud Foundry, and right now we are actually investigating Kong, which you might have known as the API gateway. Mm -hmm. So the problems that we face is like we need to rate limit the APIs, and um, and. Right now, there are some problems with the limitations of the Azure load balancer, which can be solved by the API gateway. So these are the two limitations that I actually see. So the question is, is Istio overkill or is Kong better? Sure. Uh, I have not personally used Kong, so I can't yeah. speak to it. But I can tell you that the exact use case was uh, is the reason that uh, the weather company, the which is uh, kind of under IBM, but they were looking, they were using AWS at the time being, uh, prior to being acquired by IBM, and they noticed the same issue with the, the AWS load balancer. They couldn't figure out how to retry or throttle requests. It was either all or nothing. So what they are currently using in production for a few of their services is they did that by just using uh, an Istio gateway, similar to Gateway just being the overloaded term we seem to be using for some sort of an edge load balancer. But what uh, they're able to see is uh, they, they have like a nice little graph thing that kind of draws where all their traffic is going. I think they're using uh, a Netflix uh, open source product called Visceral to, to view this. But uh, during times of like a hurricane or whatnot, any number of reasons why everyone would be looking at weather.com, things would just fall over because they were spilling out and maybe round robining to all of the nodes or else just generally that one was busy but it kept getting sent to it. So they, were, they have since moved to Envoy and they're seeing much better performance because they're able to choose the type of load balancing that's specific to that service. So for example, if you've ever had uh, an issue with your service and people are calling your service or depending on it, uh, and they think uh, that their requests aren't going in, they're gonna try again immediately, which if your service is under stress, definitely doesn't help. It's you know, the thundering herd problem. 
what you want to do is try to back off intelligently. So they're using that sort of functionality through Istio by stating, I know that this service can handle this much. If I cross this threshold, open the circuit breaker and start routing to either healthier instances or start serving codes back until the service recovers. So you can customize per all of those applications that you have nested under there, different retries for each of them, uh, different load balancing schemes. Maybe you have an application where round robin does, doesn't make sense because some queries could be very expensive. Like the difference between loading all of the entries in the database versus just one, that's a different uh, expense level depending on how long it takes to come back. So if you're round robin around, of course, and uh, it's just your turn again, you're handling this expensive query, you're immediately going to get bogged down. So they did exactly that with their uh, weather service, and they've been having pretty good success for it, with it. And that's the, the only part, actually, that they have migrated so far to Istio. They're working on kind of everything under that. But their edge load balancer that they were using AWS for is working well, as well as they're capturing a lot more metrics um, out of that than what they were able to gather from whatever currently AWS is using. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, this reminds me of uh, uh, a opinion I've been developing. Um, and, and given the capabilities, this goes back to, uh, Troy, your question about what problems does uh, Istio solve. Uh, given the problems that it does solve and the, uh, the capabilities of Istio, it's, uh, it looks really like an API gateway to me, a distributed API gateway. Uh, it's pluggable, and even API gateway providers uh, are developing a strategy to become um, engines or policy engines enforced by Istio and uh, up applied by the envoys. So uh, when I talk to customers who say, well, I've got this strategy with API Gateway Provider X, Y, or Z. How does Istio fit in? There's, there's a story there, um, but over time, that story might become, well, Istio is your API Gateway, and you can bring your policy engine, you know, or many of them. Just want to time check. We'll probably have a couple minutes more. I don't think there's any sessions after us. But does anyone have any other further things that they just like to talk about. In my mind, this has been successful because we learned a bit about, you know, I wrote a few things down just generally in that Etherpad. If you have more questions throughout the week, you know, that Etherpad will still be up. Just make sure you're following the conference uh, code of conduct and not, you know, trying to mess with it in any sort of negative way. Um, but it's, it's still clear that, you know, Istio, many people still wondering on what it's going to do for them. Uh, contributing was one that I heard earlier. I didn't hear it here. Um, as well as, you know, the API gateway. You know, maybe that is something that we need to be talking more about. You know, is it a competitor or is it an API gateway if you want to think of about that? Shannon, any other I think it's polls? beer time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you everyone for coming. Like I said, that link, IBM.biz, will be up. <laughs>